we've talked about the production of sound in a couple of videos back, and we said that for the production of sound, we need to have two things. First of all, we need to have a medium for that sound to be produced in, and that medium is generally for us humans when it comes to speech, it would be air, so air molecules, particles in the air, such as oxygen particles, carbon dioxide particles, or nitrogen gas particles, just different particles that are within air, is the medium where the sound can actually travel in. But we don't just need to have only, have only a medium, we also need to have a source of vibrations. So um, a sound is produced when there's vibrations. Vibrations just means that something goes back and forth, back and forth. That's your vibrations, when something going back and forth. And the example we used was a speaker, right? The speaker produces sound by having metal pieces within it uh, or something else within it vibrate. And the vibrations will produce, will make this medium, so we'll make the air molecules compress. That's what we call compression. So compression would be this part, which is equal to the highest part of the wave. And then refraction is when the, the air molecules are spread further apart. That would be the bottom part of that wave, right? So to make sound, we need to have these compression and refractions. And eventually the sound will get to our ear and we can hear it. But in terms of humans, humans, obviously we don't have a, like we don't have a loudspeaker in our throat. We don't make our speech by having a loudspeaker. We use something else. We use the, something called the larn, larnings, larnings, larnings. <laughs> Larynx. Um, I'm German, so sometimes my pronunciation is absolutely shocking. But it's the larynx, which produce the sound for humans. Larynx is a voice box, right? So the voice box is, I'm going to talk about more in a second, but the voice box is located just above the trachea and below the oral cavity, which would this be this part. But we don't just need only the larynx. Like if we were to only produce, you need the larynx to produce sound, then I could not use my tongue, so no tongue would still mean the same kind of voice, the same kind of sound. So for example, this is how I sound like when I'm using my tongue. And this is how I sound like if I do not use my tongue. So hopefully you could probably tell the difference between using my tongue in speech and not using my tongue. So the larynx, whilst it's important, it's the first thing that produces sound, there's other structures, such as tongue, the teeth, the soft and hard plate, soft plus hard plate. All of these are also important when it comes to sound production and they are found in the oral cavity. Um, but all those things combined help us to produce the sound in terms of speech that we do produce on a daily basis or hopefully on a daily basis for most people that talk every day. And me making videos and me talking a lot, I tend to talk a lot. So I use my larynx, tongue, teeth and soft and hard plate very often. All right, so but what this document actually says is we need to outline the structure of the human larynx and the associated structures that assist in the production of sound. So the associated structures would just be the soft, harp, uh, soft and hard plate, which would be this part here, the tongue and the teeth. So these are your associated structures. Um, or, you, or you could just say these are the structures, the other structures that are also important when it comes to production of sound, but we're going to focus mainly on the, in terms of structure, on the larynx, because the dot point says outline, it does not say identify, which means outlines means we need to be able to say that larynx is important or larynx are important, but we need to give more detail. So outlining means more detail than just purely saying that larynx are important for sound production. So we're going to cover the more detailed part in this video. All right, so larynx, first of all, where can it be found? I mentioned earlier, they can be found above the trachea. Again, German pronunciation is obviously bad. I'm not sure if it's actually called trachea, but I always say trachea. But this would be the, the windpipe, where the actual, so this is the um, trachea. And this is where the air will pass through. So air passes through here. If we are inhaling, so we inhale air from the mouth and it goes down into our lungs, that's, that's inhaling. But if we're exhaling, exhaling it will go the other way. It will go from our trachea and out through our mouth. And exhaling, the air from exhaling is what we use to produce speech. Right? So that's the first part. So the actual air will travel through the trachea and then travel through the larynx or also called 
the voice box, right, so it's right there. And the Adam's apple would be one example of part of the actual um, voice box, right? So Adam's apple is the visible part, uh, especially for guys, you tend to see the apple, Adam's apple more than with girls. So that's the thing that sticks out in your neck. And so this is a front view of the Adam's apple. And just to point out, maybe three parts, structural parts, these are the structural parts of the larynx that you should know. There's cartilage, there's quite a bit of cartilage um, when it comes to the larynx. The cartilage is like, um, it's not bone, it's something different, but it's, it's flexible. It's more flexible than bone, but it's quite strong. So it's flexible, but tough. So the cartilage is there for protection, but also it can move a bit to allow it to make it a bit more room, to give it a bit more room, especially when it comes to the vocal cords. So cartilage is, so this part would be cartilage, this here is cartilage, so most of it is cartilage, so quite a bit of car cartilage in the lar larynx, especially the front plate. Um, then we've got the hollow tube, so this is just meant to be one of my 3D representations of the larynx, or the most important parts. Again, my drawings are usually always horrible, and same with my 3D drawings, I can't draw 3D, but this is my best attempt. So these would be the cartilage parts around the actual hollow tubes. These are meant to be these parts here, right? the ones in green. But then there's this tube, where this is where the air will pass through, so air, exhaling air from here will pass through this tube, so a hollow tube just means there's a room, it's not filled, there's some room where air can pass through. And that's important because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get air from our trachea down, out through our mouth, that's, so that's important. So the hollow tube uh, is, is covered by the cartilage which protects it. And in that hollow tube, so on the, at the upper section, so roughly here, uh, or some probably not there, I don't actually know exactly where it is, oh, wait, there it is, your vocal cords. So they would be yeah, roughly there-ish. There we can find the vocal cords. And the vocal cords are just muscles that can open and close. So these muscles can open and close. And these muscles are, when they open and close, when they, that's when they're vibrating, right? So they can open, they can close, they can have different levels of opening and closing. And depending on how open they are or how close they are, that's when vibrations happen and that's when sound gets produced. So we've got here, we've got the vocal folds. So these are vocal folds, that's where our vocal cords are at. Our vocal cords, and these vocal cords are these muscles that help us produce sound. So when they're closed, that's when we swallow. So when we're swallowing, we don't want to have food go down into our trachea, so it's closed. But as these open and close, so if they're just open and close constantly, that's called vibrating, right? Open and closing, that's vibrating. So vibrating, when they're vibrating, they are producing sound. So different types of sound will have different um, speed of opening and closing. Right? So if it opens really fast and, or, or slower, that will produce different types of sounds. And, but yeah, so when these muscles are vibrating, that's when we have sound being produced, because vibrations produce sound. And then when it's always open, so if it doesn't, if it doesn't um, vibrate, that's what happens when we breathe quietly. So generally they're open, if we're eating, they're closed, and if we're speaking, they're opening and closing quite quickly, so it's, that's vibration. And remember, vibration was just the idea that we pr are producing these different types of compression and refractions, which are produced for, for vibrations, and those different types of compression and refractions are required to produce sound. Right? So a speaker will have this speaker system to produce sound, we humans have our larynx, but remember, we also have our teeth, tongue, soft and hard plate, and all these parts combined to form the sound we produce as humans. So I'll go over quickly that again the dot points is outline the structures of the human larynx and the associated structures that assist in the production of the of sound. So the most important one is the larynx. That was the voice box. It was located above the trachea and below the oral cavity, so in between, so in between our throat. Um, yeah, it made, it's made up of mainly of three parts, but there's more, but these are the three kind of main focus parts that I focused on. The cartilage, the hollow tube, and vocal cords. Cartilage is just covering the surround, surrounds the hollow tube. It's flexible and tough. Flexible means it can, it can kind of give way a bit, it can open a bit. Uh, so it, it doesn't hold it stiff. And tough means it's still quite protective as well. The hollow tube means it's hollow because that means it allows air to pass. And as air passes, so as air passes through, 
is um, these vocal cords, which are inside the larynx, as air passes through, if the vocal cords are open and closing, this will change the air, so it will make it um, refract and compress the air when these different type these vocal cords are opening and closing, right? So that's when sound is being produced at these vocal cords, which are muscles that open and close. So as they're vibrating, it changes the air, it refracts and compresses the air, and this will produce sound. But I hope that was useful.